Have you ever encountered in Unity a game object going through another collider without that being expected? What I mean here is that I have, for example, in my scene, a sphere and a cube both have a collider on them with the sphere also having a rigid body with some increased gravity in order to give it some velocity. And if this sphere is going above a limit with its velocity, it will be going through its collider uh, of the cube. So if I were to run this, you'll see that the sphere went through the cube without that being detected from the physics engine and without the collision on carrying between the sphere and the cube. So how do we fix that? And there are a number of ways that we can do that. The first and most simple way I think of doing that is by increasing the size of our colliders. And just to understand how, why this works, I will be explaining why the two colliders are not being detected when they are about to collide. When you have a game object, let's say in our example, this sphere has a very high velocity and each frame the physics engine is moving this uh, rigid body slowly depending on the velocity uh, each frame going downwards and when it comes to the point where it comes close to this so if I were to drag this down and it's about to detect collision between each frame so let's say the last frame was about here due to its highest velocity the next frame that is going to be detecting is going to be let's say underneath this uh, collider so this will ignore the uh, actual collision for being detected due to the fact that uh, in phys the physics engine's mind it doesn't ever get detected it just clips through it and teleports based on the velocity because the velocity is so high it just goes straight through it without actually being able to detect it so that is why uh, this uh, occurs and the reason why the scale would work so if I were to increase this this will give our physics engine a higher chance of detecting this so due to this being larger the physics engine will have a higher chance of actually detecting the collision so if I were to run this one more time you'll see that this way of course will work so you'll see that it will stop there and you might have seen that the sphere almost went through it but due to be the collider being too thick it didn't actually manage to go through the other side so in the physics engine what happened here is when it actually uh, checked between each frame so in the previous example the uh, let's say this collider tried to go through starting from here and the next frame let's say was about here now it has a collider so it, it happens to be the sphere is within the other uh, collider so what happens is it just pushed it upwards to the closest position outside of this collider so it pushed it upwards so this is what happens here and you may think well, what if I can't uh, scale up my collider? So in your game, you might not have this flexibility. So another thing that you might uh, be able to do is change the collision detection. So if you were to go to your rigid body, you'll see that there are different modes of detecting collision. And the most efficient way of doing this and detecting collision as much as possible will be the continuous dynamic collision detection. And while this is a bit more computationally expensive, or your physics engine, this actually will give you the result that you need. So if I were to run this one more time, you'll see that it will drop, but this will time it will detect the collision and it will stick the landing without actually trying to go through it as we had before. So this is definitely one way of doing so. And another thing that you might be able to do is actually if you have, let's say, in my QV, if I had a rigid body, I would change the collision detection for this to continuous instead of uh, continuous dynamic uh, because uh, I would suggest having your player or whatever is your main character as continuous dynamic only and I wouldn't have any other game object to continuous dynamic due to how uh, expensive it is for your computer so I would suggest only having one of these and the other ones let's say your boxes to be uh, continuous this is still computationally expensive but it's not as much now let's say you have this example here so i have a player that is able to move around and i have this somewhat of a clock that is rotating around based on the buttons that i press and if i were to press let's say to rotate towards the right side you'll see uh, this effect going on what if i'm moving towards the right side and the clock is trying to rotate towards the left side so if i were to do this you'll see this effect so my player will be 
uh, essentially clipping through the collision and the colliders of my clock due to the fact that, um, as I mentioned before, it kind of forces its way within the collider and between each frame, you'll see this result getting on. So uh, my player is trying to move inside of this, the clock is trying to move towards the other side, and as a result, we get this result. So there you have it. And the way that I found a very easy way of doing so is going to edit product settings and going to physics. And then there is this default max depenetration velocity. And this essentially says how much velocity should your objects have to penetrate through uh, colliders. So by default, it's 10 and 10 is quite low. So instead, I'll just set it to a very large number. Let's say uh, this. Uh, so it's uh, to the power of 10. If I were to run this and try to replicate that, you'll see that. Uh, let me just go quickly onto my clock and kind of jump onto my clock as before. So doing the exact movement as before, you'll see that the player is not able to penetrate through due to the velocity being higher. So uh, physics in the project settings have a lot of secrets around. So having a look at this should definitely help you out. So these are the best ways that I found of preventing colliders from clipping through one another. If you have any colliders or any methods that you have found to resolve this issue, make sure to comment them below so other people are able to uh, find out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like. And thank you for watching and goodbye.